So here we are finally in the 3D modeling software. This software is called 3ds Max and it's by Autodesk. Autodesk is a publisher of different 3D applications and different pieces of software. Uh, they vary largely, but 3ds Max, uh, Autodesk is a pretty standard industry 3D modeling software for the video games industry. You'll also hear people talk a lot about um, Maya. Uh, Maya is another one that's a major 3D modeling software that's used a lot by different companies. But we're gonna cover 3ds Max. So the first thing you wanna do is if you don't have this and you don't know where to get it and you say, oh my gosh, I looked it up and it was you know, $3,500 or et cetera, it was super expensive, do not worry. Uh, if you go to Autodesk's website, under free software, we actually have a student section, free software, this will load, if you give it a second, and you will actually be able to find Autodesk 3ds Max here in the list of their products and be able to download it right away. And the student version, the only thing that's uh, limited is you're not really allowed to use it to make money on. But if you're trying to learn the software or something like that, this is a great way and a great tool that Autodesk has released that didn't exist uh, a couple years ago. Um, and all you'd have to do is sign up. Um, they'll probably ask you for some information, etc., register and log in and stuff. Uh, and you might need to have a school or an affiliation to be able to use it as a student. Don't worry if you're not going to school or you're not in college or something like that. There is like a homeschool option. So just in case you're not planning to go to college or you're not in college or something like that, there is an option to get around some of that formality. Okay. Now that you should have it installed, downloaded, up and running, it should look similar to this. I've changed a few things in my interface. I've collapsed some... Um, bars and things I don't use that often as a modeler. More of those are used for animation tools. We're not really worried about animation at this point. We're really just going to focus in on the basic interface here and modeling. So if I was going to break this into big chunks, I'd almost kind of say I'd, I'd look at this big green button. This is kind of our outlet to make new files, saving, opening, importing, exporting, etc. This is really, I use this button quite a bit. It's just this big green Autodesk button. A lot of these tabs up here, these bars, these are just different options of ways to do different things. When we get into making objects, it's ways of these kind of areas for moving objects and scaling them, rotating them, selecting objects, uh, snapping the pivots, different areas kind of in this area. Then we have mirroring and aligning, which would really help later when we're kind of like duplicating objects that are the same. Management tools for when we, our scenes get really complex, if we have a bunch of objects to make up an object. We get into the last tab down here, which is like rendering, which would be we have an object in this kind of crummy window down here, and we want to we have some lights, but they haven't really projected their information yet. So we can hit these buttons down here to get kind of like really nice calculated uh, images. And then on the side here, this is kind of the equivalent of your toolbox if you were a mechanic. We have a ton of different tabs and buttons and things that look confusing and menus within menus. Don't really worry about it. It's not that confusing and you're really only gonna be using a couple of these tabs anyways. Um, a majority of this stuff uh, you really don't use in your everyday cases. It's really just kinda sits here and kinda gets in your way in a way. So, the last part is kind of these four giant windows. And what these do is help us view the objects we put into these scenes. So this grid is a scene, and these different views, where it says front here, wireframe, these are called viewports. And they're just kind of like cameras sitting in space that are invisible, but can view the world from their angle. And how we select them is we just click in them, we can click in them, or we can middle, class, middle mouse button click, click in them, or we can right click in them, it, it doesn't matter. We just have to make sure that whatever one we're trying to work in is active this kind of yellow border and then the last part of the UI is just kind of some basic information some animation tools some basic basic camera tools that you really don't want to use ultimately we'll end up talking about keyboard shortcuts that are much faster than having to come down and use these uh, I never use these really ever in my day-to-day -day life so a lot of this stuff I just kind of ignore uh, the only type of area you might want to pay attention to later is some of these 
um, value inputs where we can move objects based on a number instead of just eyeballing it. It's much more precise. And then we have this like animation bar, which is good for like when you get, if you're doing any kind of animation or stuff like that, this is a time slider, but we're not worried about that because we're just going to do 3D, but it's good to know. And then there's some, you can type some max script type stuff in here if you need to. Other things, my errors might pop up down here, but really it's nothing of your concern in the day-to-day -day world. Your real bread and butter is in these four windows, which are called viewports. This is your modifier panel, which I'll refer to as your kind of your toolbox, where you keep all the different objects you're gonna use to create 3D models, and then all of the tools that help you modify those objects to make 3D models. And then lastly, you have a lot of different kind of shortcut keys to do some important things like we want to be really precise. We can snap things to certain locations or other objects. Um, we can use these buttons up here, which a lot of these buttons up here actually have shortcut keys too, which I always will suggest learn the shortcut keys, save yourself a bunch of time in the future. Don't rely on clicking these buttons. And then just a few modifier buttons up here that we really are not going to use that often. There might be one or two things out of this menu list up here they're going to use. Um, but the majority of the time, you'll be kind of clicking on this button, going to save, open, and that's about it.